is Monday. It is January 31st. And the word of the day is amicy, which means the mystery of what goes on behind the scenes of your social life, like the back channels and secondary affiliations that you might never hear about. Used in a sentence, you guys don't have your own amicy relationship without me, right? Though you, you have to tell me. <laughs> no. We stop existing when you click out of the Skype call, buddy. I promise. When you uh, stop okay. looking, exactly. I'm no illusions. It's Eli Bosnick. How whoops teeth and right and <laughs> broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center. We are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Joe Rogan fans didn't want hearts of gold anyways. <laughs> we do the SCOTUS <laughs> version of Monty Python's Bring Out Your Dead scene. <laughs> And Fox News examines the best footwear for the chocolate you want to fuck. <laughs> it it, it <laughs> does. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, making that <laughs> fat podcast money. Yeah, you investing it well? Any good investments lately? Uh, okay. Eli, maybe? Eli, NFTs, Bitcoin, what are you doing? So, at you, look, I just spent $200 on a 1976 mint condition Atari Pong console, and I am not the one you're picking on right now. That's amazing, <laughs> right? I am. That's correct. I've been informed that I am part of the HODL crew, so uh-huh. yeah. yeah, I expect How's a that going? gif of an ape any minute now. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Yeah. In our lead story tonight. After an arduous campaign by people concerned by the glaring deficiencies in our national judicial leadership, the way has finally been paved for Joe Biden to nominate a candidate to the loftiest seat of judgment our nation has to offer. And that position is, of course, first cat. That's right. After a painful (laughs) absence of more than a decade, our overlords were once again represented in the halls of power when a great tabby named Willow moved into the presidential residence on Friday. Willow brings with her a resplendent, confident air of feline sagacity, as well as fuzzy little pooty boots and the most boopable of little noses. Also, Stephen Breyer is going to retire and the lesser vacancy of Supreme Court justice will be filled by Biden, though Willow is not considered to be in the running at this time. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Noah, Willow and Breyer's replacement are going to have about the same amount of power <laughs> in you know determining what happens to the yeah, country. Willow true. maybe a little bit more, if anything. Well, really, yeah. So, yeah, obviously the real story here is Breyer, uh, for fear of having to be robocopped into an extra nine days of desperate cyborgian pseudo-survival for the sake of the rule of law the way they try to do with RBG, Breyer has finally capitulated to the cacophony of voices pointing out that if he doesn't retire before the midterms, we're going to get Mitch McConnell into yet another 23-year-old zealot whenever the hell they get the White House back. Uh, The 83-year-old justice announced his retirement on Thursday, which will be effective once a replacement is confirmed. Hey, does anyone know a way that we could replace more justices? I know they can retire. Are there any other? Does anyone know? Oh, oh, okay. So you remember in Bob Saget's aristocrats joke, the guy starts, he's fisting the neck of the. Oh, yeah. Punches and then right through. Just, yeah. Absolutely. And then so it, I just think effectively he's just a Phoenix wall. But you wouldn't go diarrhea like, everywhere like, from the small children that are being. As you sh- what is the line for violence? I feel like there's a scenario. It'd be fun. Of course, it would be fun. Given the Bermuda triangulated <laughs> moral compasses of a few key Democratic senators. I like that we all ended on fun. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So. It, Given the Bermuda triangulated moral compasses of a few key Democratic senators, there's no guarantee that we can get anyone left of Antonin Scalia confirmed to the court to begin with. And even if we do, that just means the 6-3 majority against basic human decency we already had to continue to be what we have. That being said... Virtually every liberal judge in the country is younger than 83, and to be honest, virtually every liberal under 83 is more liberal than Stephen Breyer. And, of course, there's no filibuster against Supreme Court nominees thanks to Republican changes at the beginning of the Trump presidency, so there actually is good news wrapped up in this one. Yeah. Breyer, for those of you struggling to remember, is the guy whose most famous act is walking into the lunchroom after Bush v. Gore went down and was like, Come on, none of this matters to us. We're rich. So, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty easy to find someone to scooch to the left. Yeah, that'd be nice. It's going to be fine. Maybe the liberal justice we find can do like a personal mitosis thing and and it's all good. (laughs) The future's bright. 
It's worth noting that when he was asked about this on the campaign trail, Biden said that if he had the chance to fill a Supreme Court vacancy, he would seek to do so with an African-American female nominee. Uh, This, of course, led to an uproar among a lot of white men who dubbed the promise prejudicial and feared that the demographic group who occupied 108 of the 115 historical SCOTUS vacancies was in danger of (laughs) underrepresentation. If Biden makes good on that campaign promise, that would make his nominee just the third African-American justice and only the sixth woman to sit on the uh, the high court, uh, meaning that two-thirds of history's female Supreme Court justices would be sitting on the court at the same time. Ooh, Noah, I hate to correct you on the air, but Clarence Thomas has actually had his blackness revoked. So she, he's looking at the two I, spot. I looking know. at the two spot. I think we're allowed yeah. To. Also, uh, Joe Manchin said he's on board with Candace Owens. So that's good <laughs> to know. That's a starting point. <laughs> Let's get well, wacky up there. Huh? Yeah, right. So uh, when asked if Republicans would try to block Biden's nominee, Mitch McConnell replied, quote, we don't even know who the nominee is yet, end quote, as as that fucking matters. Jesus Christ, who the hell are you even trying to fool? Of course, assuming that the Christian cinema of non-believers, Kirsten Cinema and Joe, did I mention my mansion, mansion can keep their shit together, which in this case actually is where the smart money is. Uh, it's not going to matter what McConnell does. He's going to have fuck all to do with it. Uh, that being said, science has yet to describe a level of assuredness that Senate Democrats can't <laughs> fuck up, so we'll refrain from any chicken counting for the time being. Mm. And we dropped the Senate majority and broke it. We dropped it. Oh, we dropped it on the ground. No. Uh, and speaking of trying to find better help, hey, damn, sometimes you don't have to stretch for these segues at all. It's time for a word from this week's first sponsor, BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Banana. Dude, stop. Come on. I just want to know why it always says banana at this spot, though. I don't know. Banana. Banana. But it's probably not good. It's probably not good to do that. Stop doing that. Eli, are you refusing Heath a banana again? I heard him yelling from upstairs. Oh, hey, no. 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 You know how we talk about better help a lot on this show? And this month, we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. Sure, yeah. Uh Well, I figured what better way to do that than with a brain checkup for Heath? Yeah, plus we watched Hannibal last night. (laughs) We did. Yes. Ooh, what does this one do? Monkey times tables. Interesting. Guys, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do a brain checkup by sawing off your head and poking around in there. I think you're supposed to do that with a licensed professional therapist. Wait, you're supposed to see a therapist even when nothing is... Super wrong with you. Hamlet witches. Okay, Hamlet witches. I'm going to mark that down. Yeah, everyone deals with the everyday stresses and strains of normal life. Talking to a licensed professional therapist once in a while is just like getting a checkup at your regular doctor. By which you mean most people don't do it until something's terribly wrong, and then they blame the very concept of medicine instead of themselves for not doing the maintenance on themselves that they would do on, for example, a 97 Ford Taurus that they have. Exactly. I mean, it's a, a little harsh, but yes. That's on me. I was pushing down on this. People don't like Bible Peace Theater. Okay, well, now I'm not pushing down on that anymore. But Noah, finding a therapist can be really hard, and all this required was a hacksaw. Well, that's why there's better help. Oh. What's hammock, Elizabeth Warren? Come on! What's better help? Does that count? I feel like that should that count. That counts. <laughs> Interesting. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Skeptocrat listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, Heath, looks like we don't need to do this after all. Let's get your head screwed back on. People don't like Bible Peace Theater. Eli, stop poking his brain. No, just, people don't like that. Was, that was just me. Oh, no, they don't. Yeah. I was just saying it regular. Mm-hmm. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Neil Young and the Brainless News. Canadian-American heartthrob and country music star Neil Young removed his catalog from Spotify this week in response to their continued spread of misinformation via the Joe Rogan podcast. And for what it's worth, in our house, I'll always teach your children, he's got a heart of gold. Okay, okay, okay. Neil Young has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. 
and he's on Rolling Stone's list of the 50 greatest musical artists of all time. I'll be damned if you're going to call him a country music star, and then we're just going to act like we can all still be friends here or something. Okay, one thing I've been enjoying is watching some lower level people do the same thing as Neil Young. Like, like a bunch of Spotify listeners were like, "Oh, Neil Young and Nils Lofgren yes. now." <laughs> okay, well, I mean, yeah, Crazy Horse was probably already getting pulled with Neil Young and E Street Band. That's Bruce Springsteen's thing. He'll handle that. But but no more Grin. The band Grin. Okay, now I am out. I'm drawing a line. Yeah. So it's actually worth pointing out that Neil Young was actually doing something even better than just telling Joe Rogan to fuck himself. An act which is good and cool on its own. Uh, when he resigned, he also drew attention to the 270 doctors, physicians, and science educators that signed an open letter asking Spotify to stop spreading Rogan's baseless claims last month. A letter which, on surprisingly got way less press than Neil Young dropping his music from the platform. So, you know, yeah. good on Neil. Well, and from everything that I can tell, I don't think they've confirmed this yet, but it looks like Spotify got so overwhelmed with cancellations that their unsubscribe portal crashed over the weekend. So, you know, between that and the accelerated death rate of people who listen to Joe Rogan, those execs have got to be a little nervous. <laughs> And their stock at Spotify is down about 25% right now. This is good stuff. By the way, if you fucking douchebags at r slash Wall Street bets ever want to do one goddamn good thing in your lives, <laughs> short that motherfucker hard. Mm. Eli, stop buying a stock every time it goes down. You're not going to catch it on the bounce. It. You're not, you're not going to catch it on the bounce. Crushing it. You shouldn't be allowed to have money. You have and a child. It won't yeah. last long. Don't worry. <laughs> Now, Spotify, which is run by bug-eyed techno ghouls, responded in the way every time someone shines the light of humanity near Silicon Valley in a statement that read, quote, We want all the world's music and audio content to be available to Spotify users. With that comes great responsibility in balancing both safety for listeners and freedom for creators. We have detailed content policies in place and we've removed over 20,000 podcast episodes related to COVID since the start of the pandemic, end quote. Yeah, and uh, by the way, their internal policies on medical misinformation leaked over the weekend, and basically, like, as long as Joe Rogan doesn't say the vaccines are designed to murder you with nanobots, he's in the fucking clear. <laughs> well, also, if he says... Murder you with nanobots? I think he's also in well, the right. yeah, Which, like that. by the way, just means that there are 20,000 podcast out episodes out there that say that the thing is designed to murder <laughs> you with nanobots. Without right. doing a little question mark thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, adding to that, just the day before this recording, Joni Mitchell, a folk singer who taught your parents how to fuck, joined <laughs> with Neil, leaving us with the startling revelation that the single strongest move against pseudoscience of the last 10 years could be a fucking tweet from Taylor Swift. Really yeah. take that in. Yeah, it's, it's super awkward when all these somebody should do something musicians are faced with an opportunity to genuinely do something. Yeah, just that's... one tweet, Tay Tay, <laughs> just one tweet. So, yeah, it's probably not going to happen, sadly. And Joe Rogan's dead-eyed, gummy bear-chewing alpha brains will continue to tweet the word bitch at women smarter than them. And the world will get worse and worse until they're too old and weakened by their long COVID to vote. But then, then, things might get better. Silver lining. Did I mention that thing about Supreme Court justices? I know they can retire. Mm. It'll come... What's the other... No. Way... No. We get new ones. <laughs> and in public eyesore news, we have two very important follow-up stories. One about pirate stuff and the other about urine stuff. Nice. I'll start with the pirate. Yeah. Of course, I'm talking about Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers. They're the domestic terrorist group with a bunch of members who conspired to be part of the Capitol insurrection. And we talked about how Rhodes got charged with seditious conspiracy last time around. Well, most recently... He got denied bail by a Texas judge, which means right now, Stuart Rhodes is shouting, am I being detained while definitely being detained? Yes. So that's nice, nice to hear. Of course, any good news gets immediately canceled out by the evil fabric of the universe and its balancing power. So we also got a public statement from Donald Trump assuring us that if he's elected again in 2024, he'll be ready to give out plenty of pardons to anyone who gets convicted of Definitely being a domestic terrorist operative for him during the insurrection. Yep. Yep. And if you hadn't said convicted, I could have made a self-pardon joke there, but <laughs> not, not anymore. 
Yeah, okay. So uh, the domestic terrorism thing, obviously bad, but the most important facet of our very serious journalism was the physical appearance of Stuart Rhodes. Okay. Because he looks like a Nazi turnip. He does. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Mm-hmm. And you have to talk about that you when do. somebody looks like a Nazi you turnip. Yeah. Like like Mario 2 yes, wants to pull exactly. him out of the ground right. and yeah. throw him at somebody. If you, if you pulled it the wrong fucking route, that would yeah. be it. Wooly yeah. white power <laughs> willy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an extremely important detail that we left out. Regarding his backstory, when we talked this about this, this is why you did this story. Time. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There's I don't know no how I didn't already know about this. Right. I've hated this guy for so long, and I just learned about this recently. <laughs> okay, I'm going to build to this detail. First of all, more backstory. He was born in a place in Montana called Big Arm. He was born in Big Arm, was Montana. <laughs> also, he's a former firearms instructor. Just keep that in mind when we add the final detail. Former. Firearms instructor, somebody who's like, you know, theoretically qualified to deal with the safety of a firearm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other detail. Um, The reason the crazy gun nut who started a domestic terrorist group has an eye patch is because he dropped a loaded gun and shot himself in the fucking face. (laughs) (laughs) I have never been happier. I don't think in my life than when I learned about this. We have to talk about this because there's so many things about it that make it funny. First of all, the gun he dropped, the company literally demonstrated that you can't hurt yourself dropping that gun by dropping it out of like a third story window in one of their ads. Didn't they do it with a helicopter? Yes. It was a Glock out of a helicopter? Yeah. It's so funny. But, but. When you consider that there are literally hundreds of accidental shootings by children every year, it is incredibly unlucky that he's alive. Like, think yeah. about how. <laughs> yeah, there was that was a prime opportunity. It's, it's like it, it's not just the miracles that he misses that disprove the idea of a loving God. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Answer that, William Lane Craig. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the argument from this asshole over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The Kalam cosmological, this asshole over here. Absolutely. Okay. That brings us to the urine. Anti-vaxxers are drinking urine. That's happening. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest proponents is the guy we talked about last time, Chris Key, who calls himself the vaccine police. And he released a video that got a bunch of attention telling everyone to skip the vaccine and just drink your own pee instead. Well, here's the latest. It's all Alex Jones's fault. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. It's all Alex Jones's fault. Yeah. We learned last week that Chris Key got the urine idea originally from Edward Group, who calls himself a doctor. I will not. I'm going to use the doctor after I said his name. Edward Group is a chiropractor and wellness Sherpa. What? Who has a line of bullshit snake oil supplements that get sold by InfoWars on the InfoWars brand. Sorry, Heath, earlier this year, they literally started drinking snake venom. So do you mean he literally he has snake oil or colloquially <laughs> has snake It's 2022, buddy. You got to be specific, man. Yeah, yes. it's like Amway selling actual pyramids now. It gets confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how Chris Key, vaccine policeman, learned about the pee-drinking COVID cure. He was driving around the country with his flamethrower and his collection of assault rifles, Mm -hmm. like you do, hoping to citizens arrest a bunch of Democrat governors and uh, then getting arrested himself instead of that. So just typical stuff. And after getting out of jail for that, Mr. Key thought it was time for a Sherpa of wellness. That's, you know, that's a reasonable time in your life to seek out a, a wellness Sherpa. So he did that, and he met up with Mr. Group. And that's when Chris Key learned about the pee drinking. According to Group, the Sherpa, drinking urine also helps with fighting HIV, cancer, and obesity. And Group drinks about a half a gallon of his own urine every day. Okay, I will never believe this did not start with some dude like desperately making shit up when his wife walked in unexpectedly, (laughs) right? (laughs) My oncologist said, I have, I have to, to, to s- for my... The erection is because I'm so excited to live, <laughs> <laughs> darling. It's also good for sexual health, obviously, as you can see. Okay, of course, a lot of people, they hear this and they say, I don't want to drink urine, but don't worry. Mr. Group says, you can also just gargle it and spit. Oh, so, good. You know, that solves that problem. 
or you can inject nope. it. Yes, you can. Nope. Or you can snort it. What? Okay. Literally says you can snort it. Like you and, do with medicines sometimes. And, <laughs> and anti-vaxxers are doing this right now. At least one shitty idiot who was taking ivermectin was like, all right, you know what? Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, God. I didn't. Th- I thought that would be. You ever do a flip in the pool? <laughs> 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 Yeah. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for the killing innocent people thing, this might be the best prank ever. It like, almost, Mr. Group it, might it, be it doing a prank, and it's anyway, amazing. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, just, yeah. It, it's, it's close, virtually. anyway. I'm getting there. I'm yeah. getting there. I agree. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of snorting pee, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Hey, podcast listener, I'm Eli Bosnick. It can be hard to choose the right home or auto insurance these days because, well, their advertising has gotten a bit odd. What up? I'm Rick Roll, the Dabmeister. Sign up for boat insurance today. That's why there's Policy Genius. Policy Genius can easily help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price and without weird postmodern ads like this one. You know, I don't even want you to sign up for our insurance. You're stupid and we hate you. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com and answer a few questions. Policy Genius will show you the price estimates for the policies that fit your search and help you understand your options. The Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you more money and if they find you a better rate, they'll switch you over for free. Okay, next four people to sign up for car insurance get a free NFT of me, Rick Roll the Dabmeister, decoding the final message of the Zodiac Killer. Plus, Policy Genius's team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you every step until you're covered. Head to policygenius.com to get your free home and auto insurance quotes and see just how much you can save. Policy Genius, there's gotta be a better way than this. I'm roasting you on Twitter. I'm roasting you on Twitter. I hate now. I hate it. And we're back next up in headlines in green later cheese news. Fantastic. You, <laughs> thank you. I was real proud of that. <laughs> you know that myth that Republicans like to tell about how free market efficiency is a thing and how government bureaucracies fuck everything up? Well, a pair of space stories lined up in the closest reality ever comes to a heavenly refutation here because right about the same time <laughs> that the James Webb Space Telescope was overcoming its 344 potential points of failure and dropped into a flawless orbit around a gravity well a million miles away, we were also learning that an inefficiently launched SpaceX rocket stage was going to crash into the moon like a drunken Wookiee with astigmatism. Okay, so what you're saying is NASA needs a bunch of Twitter fuckboys to harass people, and then they'll get the attention and funding they deserve. Oh, there you go. (laughs) I mean, Elon Musk is incredibly well-funded by all the taxes he doesn't pay, so I feel like we should... Okay, I feel like NASA should be taunting at this point. Like, they should be dropping stuff into Elon Musk's backyard. Just, just like, <laughs> I don't know, small stuff. Oh, it's a little with, like, space debris. Little How passive-aggressive even... notes to no. make a point. Yeah. <laughs> so... Here's these diapers. Our uh, astronauts didn't need them because of all the toilets they had on the way down. Exactly. <laughs> so, the, the unintentional lunar suppository in question has actually been fumbling around space for almost seven years at this point. It was actually part of SpaceX's first deep space mission back in 2015 uh, that launched the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Deep Space Climate Observatory satellite, which, by the way, is a damn near Mama Bear-esque acronym for DISCOVER. Um, <laughs> it, it, you can get there, but it's it's hard. Uh, that satellite's ultimate destination was actually the Lagrange point opposite the one that the web just parked around, uh, which it reached about 100 days after launch. The second stage of the rocket, however, was boosted a bit too high and didn't have enough fuel to return to the Earth's atmosphere and burn up like it was supposed to. Uh, it also didn't have enough momentum to escape the Earth's gravity, so it's just kind of been bumbling around the interstitial space between here and the moon for the last seven years, slowly drifting further and further from the Earth in an erratic orbit. And it's hosting SNL. Okay, I get it. I get it now. Okay. John, John Mulaney's divorce wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what? anyway, at, at the beginning of the year, a dude who writes orbit tracking software uh, put out a call for amateur and professional astronomers to gather as much data as possible about the debris orbit. And with that data, he predicted it would smack into the moon on the far side around the equator on March 4th of this year. Which, by the way, is the day before my birthday because the sky hates me. It fucking <laughs> hates me. Of course, because we're talking about an object that's tumbling and weirdly shaped, there are perturbations in the orbit that are difficult to model. And while they introduce only small errors into the calculations, those those errors are cumulative, of course. So there's at least some possibility that it'll miss or show up a day late. But but apparently that's that's very unlikely. Okay, so it steers a lot like a Tesla on autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. you gotta admit though, a billionaire doing tremendous damage to an ancient celestial body is a great Google signature for humans, though. Right? right? Like, if the aliens don't have time to read through a whole thing, they can just be like, "Oh, yeah, okay, they, they, they yeah. crashed a fucking rocket into their moon." <laughs> yeah, that right. No, it. Be, it was their, it's the far side of their moon. I feel pretty good about enslaving them now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, just because this was an accident doesn't mean it's not fucking awesome. Right, stage two of this rocket is much smaller than stage one, but we're still talking about a hunk of metal that weighs 8,800 pounds and is going almost 6,000 miles an hour. And anytime 8,800 pounds of thing hits anything but people at 6,000 miles per hour, it's fucking awesome. Uh, but this is the moon, so it's space awesome. It's doubly <laughs> awesome. We've maybe even quadruply. I don't even know how you rank it. But NASA actually once did almost the exact same thing on purpose to study the parts of the moon that you kick up when you slam four metric tons of shit into it. And if we get the predictions right, we'll be able to observe the impact with one or both of the lunar orbiters currently taking pictures of the moon on the regular. Uh, it's also, as near as anybody can tell, the first time a piece of space debris will accidentally impact the moon, uh, giving a strong observational evidence for the first time that contrary to the aphorism, if you shoot for the stars and miss, you might still land on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who, like me, are worried this is going to wake up an angry space dragon that it turns out the moon was just an egg for... <laughs> At least by comparison, 2020 will be kind of fine, right? Right, yeah, exactly. You'll be looking, you'll be pining for those days. Totally space good. dragon's just like, I agree with these fuckboys on Twitter about a lot of stuff. No, it's a libertarian space dragon. It's worse. <laughs> it's, well, I just thought you were going to blow fire at North America and kill us. Yeah. Please do that instead. I made this NFT of my moon dragon <laughs> Oh, God. And in challenge accepted news, a record-setting brownie gave a whole new meaning to... Getting baked last month, weighing in at 850 pounds, measuring three feet wide, three feet long, and 15 inches high, and containing more than 20,000 milligrams of THC. Yeah, so as a reference, a, a typical gummy will contain around 10 milligrams, so like two, two and a half to 15. Um, so this brownie is at least 18 full servings, <laughs> <laughs> or, or around 2,000 for like Heath or Eli. <laughs> Okay, if I ate a little piece of that brownie, I could eat that whole brownie. That's true, that one, yeah. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> then I could. I once, it's I once the last person. time I got stoned, I ate two boxes of Thin Mints from yes. the Girl Scouts. <laughs> Four sleeves. Well, right, because I no ate them one by single, one, just like no, nothing was happening. No single Thin Mint has any calories. That's right? true. No, it's that's, only that's cumulatively that they have calories. That's true. I felt great afterwards. <laughs> the brownie was created by Marimed, a multi-state cannabis operator, to celebrate National Brownie Day and to promote the company's new brand of edibles, Boobies Baked, which luckily, as Noah mentioned, contain a much more manageable five milligrams of THC per confectionery treat. Unfortunately, there is no glistening Guinness trophy in the baker's future. They did reach out to the Guinness Book of World Records, but they were informed that it, quote, no longer accepts applications or creates new records that are related to the consumption, preparation, or use of tobacco, cannabis, or nicotine products, end quote. So... No, I don't know if you want to stop or just keep going for an unofficial record yeah. at this point. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You know what? That's it. I'm starting my own record book. It's going to be called the Ganges Book of World Records. I'll see y'all on Kickstarter. <laughs> go. God damn it. Million dollar <laughs> idea. So yeah, just in case the news was getting you down this week, uh, keep in your heart that there was a big old pop brownie in Massachusetts last month. You're welcome. There you go. Pop brownie. <laughs> and finally tonight. We here on the left side of America's political spectrum spend most of our time and energy worrying about issues like 
wealth inequality, <laughs> fixing the healthcare system, voter suppression, global pandemics, climate change, stuff like that. On the other side of the spectrum, uh -huh, uh -huh. they are worried about Minnie Mouse wearing a pantsuit and <laughs> M&Ms becoming <laughs> desexualized in a problematic way. <laughs> yes, right. That's real, what I just said. <laughs> That's a real thing. Candace Owens last week was triggered by Minnie Mouse with pants and Tucker Carlson was triggered by the cartoon character Lady Eminem becoming not sexy enough for his personal taste anymore of sexy chocolate cartoons. That's what they were doing at their journalism jobs yep. this week. Here's what we got from Candace Owens. She was appearing on Fox News and she spent her time on national television complaining about a new campaign by Disneyland Paris that shows Minnie Mouse wearing a pantsuit. And if a lady mouse doesn't wear a polka dot dress with a petticoat, mm -hmm. that is very sexually confusing to Candace <laughs> Owens, apparently. She said, quote, this is why people don't take these people seriously. That's, <laughs> that's the start of her rant about the proper gender expression of a cartoon mouse. Yeah. <laughs> this is why people aren't taking Disneyland Paris Tell seriously. Tell us, Candace, why are they yeah. not taking people seriously? <laughs> They're trying to destroy fabrics of our society. Polka and dot, for example. Saying yeah. that there's issues, so everybody looks over here. Look at Minnie Mouse. Don't look at inflation. Look at Minnie Mouse. But the world is going forward because you've got her in a pantsuit. Never mind that you can't buy a piece of bacon unless you got thirty dollars in your pocket. End quote. What? This is serious? Do you do you guys think she's just used up all the bad takes that are words that make sense in a row? So now <laughs> she has to just <laughs> randomly generate from some kind of outrage word ping pong ball <laughs> collection at this I, point. So okay, first of all, the only person saying look over here at Minnie Mouse is 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 you, yeah, right? It's that's you. Correct. Also. <laughs> <laughs> this is in Paris. Are they saying the the claim seems to be that a French amusement park is trying to distract us, Candace Owens at all, from American bacon inflation? <laughs> I just I feel like there are more direct routes there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like Lucille Bluth, too. How much could a piece of bacon cost? Thirty dollars? I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like to think that that's like the the white thing, you know. Like that, that's the racist thing that white people eat is bacon. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, also, the fabric of our Minnie Mouse is a fabric of society that's being destroyed. It's so confusing. I feel like I feel like she's got a lot of pressure on her shoulders suddenly that she was not aware of until yeah. today. Yeah. The way she said it too is she's picturing layers of fab. Like it's it's the fabric of society. It's not her fabrics. Head, yeah. No. Yeah. In her head, it's like different fabrics bunched together as like I don't know. She's very confused about everything. So she obviously cares about the the real victims of inflation, though. That's important, and that would of course be people who want a a single piece of folding bacon for their pocket <laughs> but they don't have $30 <laughs> cash on them and her solution for helping out the average person is of course raising interest rates and making their coffee at home yeah okay <laughs> moving on to Tucker Carlson he is very distraught after M&M's made a couple changes to their candy cartoon characters Ms. Green traded her go-go boots for sneakers and Ms. Brown got a pair of heels that aren't so high anymore as the original extra high heels. And Tucker Carlson is not having it. <laughs> the number one rated news host in goddamn America. In the whole fucking country. And a top contender for the GOP presidential nomination. For Fuck realsies. Yeah. That fucking person had a meltdown in his mouth, but not in his hand about this. <laughs> Here's the exact words from Tucker Carlson. Quote, M&M's will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. A until mistake. the moment until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any of them. What? That's what? the goal. What? When you're totally turned off, what? we've achieved equity. What? Won. I and real I didn't change a word of that. That's I... this exact quote. Okay. I really, really want to know which cartoon characters Tucker is still willing to let him accompany him for a white wine spritzer at the last <laughs> bar he can go to without being spit on now. I, I, 
Look, so I bet if we like created, say, the the Tucker Index of cartoon sensuality, and we put it online <laughs> without our names attached, we could get it cited <laughs> in the halls of Congress before the end of the year, sure right? Could. Some sure anti woke fucking give our bu- cartoon bunnies boobs back <laughs> legislation or something. <laughs> Jesus. So, all right, Mars Company, I know you're listening. You know what to do. Tucker Carlson themed Eminem getting railed by Ms. Green and Miss Brown. <laughs> Just wrecked. Maybe Angelo. Angelo, I hope you're listening too. Maybe you can make, a, I don't know, like a generic uh, copyright legal I version of that. I feel bad <laughs> about up? asking Angelo to do that. Yeah, just... Angelo spends a lot of time on his art and we're like, hey, draw Tucker Carlson getting railed by the green m M&M, and But then he's like, <laughs> okay, all right. I feel Mike. like that's probably true, but maybe he's he's like, all right, already did I mean, it. I, that's was, I was going oh, yeah. to do that. Though. That's fair. Yes. If you've already got a Tucker Carlson getting railed template and you can insert I feel like the green that's M&M. a chance he's like, like, oh my god, this is perfect. I can't believe I made this a month ago. This is, this is cool. All right, nailed it. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. Thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the knife stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Jeffrey Johnson, Nathan Dubay, Bruce Sherrod, Scotty Saucefingers, Lucky McChancy, Ronald Rumbau, Jared Wood, Frost with a zero instead of an O, I think, Calves the Size of Cantaloupes, that's back, <laughs> Christy Pierantoni, Alistair Willett, and the Quantum Cue Ball, whose pretty eyes and pirate smile are nothing like Stuart Rhodes. I mean yeah, that in the good tiny good. dancer way. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check them out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Drafts on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Introduction. Don't blow this, Heath. It? Nope. (laughs) If you can get all the way to the second letter, though, it's all downhill from there. Yeah, you'll be fine. I got to the apostrophe. No, you didn't. I didn't feel the So you know what? All right. All right. You know what? Yeah, sure. You sure did. It is Monday. Is. Nope. Nope. (laughs) Nope. I cracked on Monday. I can't believe my voice cracked. Literally, my voice cracked on Monday. Okay, here we go. One more time. It's because you didn't trust the it's. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. It? No. (laughs) The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.